Well, people don't know how to do it. You're right. And so maybe it's useful. I mean, this is certainly tying up loose ends. I feel like this is where we really soar out toward the edge and stretch the envelope of the institution. But you must know how to do it, right? And so how you do it, in my humble opinion, but based on experience, is you, first of all, you take a committed dose. You don't take some namby-pamby, piddling, testing it out, toe in the water kind of dose. Because, you know, even in the Christian, in the gospel, Christ says, it's the lukewarm that I vomit out of my mouth. You know, <laughs> don't bring me any dilettantes, no dabblers, no drugstore cowboys. So you take a committed dose. What is a committed dose? A dose that when you think about taking it, you feel fear. That's a committed <laughs> dose. So you take a committed dose. And then you take it on an empty stomach. And then you take it in silent darkness. Leave, the, leave your Walkman alone. Forget Mozart. Forget the Pink Floyd. Forget Bach's choral preludes. It's ridiculous. All that stuff sounds fine without these things. And this is heresy to some people. I mean, to some people, it's all about choosing the music. Again, this selling out, you know, what the hell? You can't illuminate your mind without having a synthesizer diddling in the background. So silent darkness, committed dose, empty stomach. And then it's very simple. You lay down, you shut up, you close your eyes and you look at the back of your eyelids with the expectation that you may see something. Now, people have described, in describing this back to me, people have called that the McKenna method, which seems to me just, you know, you must be nuts to think of it that way. Because I, I talked to someone, I won't name him, um, but a great researcher, widely published researcher in psilocybin, and, I, and he'd done 80 trips and given it to 25,000 people and so forth. And I said, well, what did you make of the hallucinations? And he said, I never closed my eyes. And I realized, you know, that these guys are just quaking with terror. And a lot of people, the main reason in the 60s, I saw a lot of people who took LSD for one reason only. committed dose in a shamanic situation and I, I and now I'm not advising this this I do not advise but this is how I do it I do it alone I have never understood the the obsessive need people have to take drugs in groups it just makes my flesh crawl and the only time I've ever been able to do it comfortably was with Amazonian people and Mestizo people where there was a language barrier. But if I take a psychedelic with somebody, then I just I listen to them breathing and I hope they're all right and I get all tangled up with are they all right and should I say something, should I not say something and this and it just turns into this mother hen thing that I can't stand. And and often when I take psychedelics alone I pass through a place where I say to myself, boy, I'm sure glad there's nobody else here because I think this would really alarm them. At, at this point, people would be reaching for 411 and since I can't, it's not going to turn into an embarrassment for me. So I think, you know, committed dose, silent darkness, empty stomach, Lay down, shut up, be still. Keeping still, the I Ching says. It's all in keeping still. Okay, so far to set and, and setting. And uh, the last thing that I wanted to mention in this context, that from my own experience, there's more than just this set and setting and dosage, which has to do with, with the cleaning of the gates of, uh, how do you say, Pforten der Wahrnehmung? Perception, doors of perception. Doors of perception, because in my own case, and again, what I saw with many other people happening is that if you still have some narcissistic patterns in your 
uh, in your um, system Perfect. or in your psyche, um, things uh, you first of all will have difficulties to stay in a place like you can do that. And uh, what happened to many people is that they either got difficulties to handle that situation and would do all kinds of things that would damage themselves, or if they would go through, they had they would run around uh, run around with. Uh, some kind of uh, omnipotent feelings. I mean, there is serious uh, research uh, being done about the fact that Hitler has taken mescaline sure. and got some of his visions, so uh, not through uh, his uh, uh, dark and 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 deep uh, wounded uh, soul, other than he did. Well, eventually it becomes an aesthetic question. I mean. You know, the trick with psychedelics, as with life generally, is to be in good taste. I mean, it is not tasteful to vomit on your partner or declare yourself the world messiah. This is embarrassing, and uh, it's happening, but it's inappropriate. I just think, uh, you know, the rules don't change when you take psychedelics. Uh, you still... Uh, there's there's no license to be a jerk. Uh, the thing about narcissistic hang-ups and stuff like that, usually I just feel that the person hasn't done enough and that sometimes you really have to clobber people, that the dose is insufficient. The way you want. Uh, potential problems in taking this. I've said to people, have you taken a lot? Have you ever seen this stuff? And they haven't quite been in the dark. Um, I've gone out, and it's hard to find a place that's dark. There's a lot of lights everywhere. Well, no, you don't go out. You just close the door and turn out the lights. Then the question is, are you, I talked to Kat a little about this, and she said, no, don't do it in the city. You're absorbing all the vibes of everybody around well, you. Well, it's true. We live in the country. But it doesn't have to be pitch. You just take, take your cone tent and go out to Joshua Tree and up a canyon and... Uh, so you agree with the thing about not uh, taking it in the city? Can No, I think it's totally weird to take it in the city. Right? Oh. But as long as, stuff. before we move on, one thing I'd like to say about technique, it may seem small here, but it someday may save you great wear and tear in a tight situation. And that is, if you get into a place uh, in the psychedelic... Uh, that is difficult, uh, Western people seem to freeze at the controls. And what you need to do is sing and recognize that sound is a tool for pushing energy around. And uh, you can just move past an unpleasant exhibit by chanting your way through it. And all the things that we are taught as spiritual tools, mantra, yantra, mudra, all these things which never work worth a damn most of the time, work perfectly in that state. In fact, that's probably what they were designed for. I mean, I have no... All these things are totally frustrating to me, but in the psychedelic state, yantra, mantra, chanting, singing, drumming. at work, drumming as advertised, uh, can move you through these spaces. Um, Let, let's give somebody else a chance. A woman back here, either Gigi or the lady in the... It's not on. It is. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Um, I just had a question about um, ritual. You mentioned the Terence method and everything. Um, Disgraceful, but yes. Yeah, well, it's, it's good advice. But So I was wondering what other rituals you do repetitively other than just like the normal brushing your teeth kind but do you, you mean in my <laughs> personal life yeah is there anything that you do every day or every other you know month that this you just I spend as, as many hours a day as I possibly can uh, smoking cannabis <laughs> this is a practice. This is the that secret of McKenna's philosophy. Thank you very much, people. Uh, this is a this practice now. that I've <laughs> adhered to since my 17th summer, and uh, you know, God knows if I put in the same amount of time on yoga or writing plays, uh, I also throw the I Ching at the new and full moon. <laughs> <laughs> 